Hello, uh, this is uh, I Go Travel with uh, Don Barnett. In this video, we're going to visit two communities. The first one is Wrangell, and the next one is Petersburg. And the community as we sailed north along the Panhandle was Wrangell, near the mouth of the Stikeen River. This is the uh, transitional territory of the Haida and Tlingit people. And the river was a Tlingit word meaning Great River. The mouth of the river, now owned by the Americans, rises in the high plateau of Canada. Only 60 kilometers of the 600 kilometer long river flows in the U.S. Uh, today. But it is these last 60 kilometers where the rich delta of the river occurs. Where the Stikine flows into the Pacific at Wrangell, uh, it is one of the of North America's richest waterfowl habitats and nesting areas. First came the Russians in search of the sea otter pelts. Then the British bought the Russian fort Dionysius and claimed the area as their own until the U.S. Uh, purchase of Alaska and uh, the area was uh, lost to the Americans in the settlement of new boundaries. Upstream in Canada, I made a video on the Stikine in the travelogue on my website in the Alaska Yukon section called uh, The Shortcut to Alaska. It was near the uh, uh, Grand Canyon of the Stikine and uh, it uh, challenges experts, uh, expert kayakers, and few have ever navigated its waters, particularly the section where the river uh, below 300 meter high cliffs narrows down from 200 meters wide to only an unbelievable two meters. You can only imagine the turbulence and power of the water in this section of the river. We drove out of Wrangell a few kilometers and found a nice place to park and uh, spent a few days just uh, camping uh, in the wilderness uh, and uh, and enjoying the uh, views. It's just a great country. It's a really majestic country, and it was a real treat to just uh, sit back and uh, loaf and uh, enjoy camping. This uh, was the marina uh, packed uh, with boats and another view of the waterfront area. And uh, the older, uh, the totem poles here seem to be older and more unique and uh, more intriguing in, in many ways. Uh, and uh, they were not the uh, new totem poles. Uh, in fact, the old ones were still lying on the ground and they were trying to protect them with uh, uh, covers, uh, wood covers, to protect them from the rain. But uh, it was just a, an older, uh, uh, interesting uh, kind of a community. The uh, big uh, tour boats, cruise ships, do not come in here. Here's some historic pictures of uh, uh, indigenous people going to a potlatch uh, ceremony and celebration. There's a lot of uh, history here that uh, I just wasn't able to find. Here's some kids, and uh, these were some uh, fossil-type uh, not fossils, but uh, ancient uh, rock work uh, along the beach that uh, we saw. Uh, here's some, also some people in more modern times in the 1920s going to a potlatch. And here's some indigenous people, and uh, they do have their times of celebration. There was a nice modern museum uh, in the town, uh, and we certainly enjoyed walking through it. All of this uh, West Coast uh, indigenous art is uh, creative and unique. All right, uh, we uh, are just uh, ready to uh, leave uh, Wrangell and we're going uh, still further north up the coast. Next uh, community is a place called Petersburg. It's a Scandinavian uh, community and uh, we uh, got there just in time for some celebrations and uh, we went out and uh, saw some icebergs. So come along, let's uh, head out to uh, Petersburg. Petersburg was the location of a Tlingit fishing camp for many generations. A Norwegian, whose first name was Peter, built a sawmill and a fish cannery here. Petersburg is still a major U.S. Uh, sea uh, food uh, processing uh, plant operation. This was a one-time world record salmon. And uh, look at the size of salmon on the floor here. 
big, huge uh, fish. And of course, here's even a bigger fish uh, caught uh, in the early days. You might have seen that video I made on Prince uh, Rupert, British Columbia, uh, where we toured uh, uh, a historic uh, fish uh, cannery. This is a salmon country, and this chart shows you the different kinds of salmon. Uh, you'll be familiar with some. There's the king salmon on the top left, the sockeye, the coho, and on the bottom, the chum salmon and the pink salmon. And they all have different sizes and uh, different characteristics, all caught in this uh, Petersburg area. The uh, flag on the left is the uh, flag of Norway. Our boat pulled into Petersburg uh, on May the 17th, a Constitution Day in Norway, and that was the date that Norway declared independence to avoid being taken over by Sweden. Many Norwegians over the years immigrated to Petersburg here, and now it is known as Alaska's Little Norway. Parades, uh, food, uh, crafts, and celebration was the order of the day and even some chainsaw demonstration was uh, all part of the uh, community celebration. Uh, like this local, let's watch a little more of the parade. <laughs> Many were in uh, Norwegian uh, traditional garments, and the prizes were awarded to the best dressed. <laughs> the local uh, Tlingit uh, indigenous people were also uh, decked out uh, in their traditional dress as well. I got talking to this guy on the street. Uh, uh, he could have been my brother. He had a bottle of vodka in his hand and claimed to be a Russian tourist. He also claimed uh, his headgear was an authentic Russian hat. At first he was not interested in a trade for my Western cowboy hat, but as the vodka disappeared down his throat, the more inclined he seemed to be open to a trade. I arrest my case. Even his matching red glasses were a perfect fit. A day or so after the parade, uh, we took a tour of the area. A lot of the uh, coastal lowland area is a muskeg base, and it was uh, too wet and spongy to walk on. The moss is uh, rich and healthy and serves to uh, maintain the moisture in the soil and uh, soak up the rainfall. Just because we are in the north, the country, it does not automatically mean uh, it is always cold. Winters are often offset by the uh, tempering, relatively uh, warm water of the uh, Pacific Ocean currents. Uh, we were along the Alaska Panhandle in the springtime, and the new growth uh, was just starting up, and it was uh, tender and lush. You may have heard me say before in another travelogue that uh, when you go on a trip, it pays to take along, if you can, a little extra money because things will come up uh, in that trip uh, that uh, you weren't expecting. And uh, examples are uh, tours that you might take, or maybe you want to purchase some things uh, that you like now that you're there. But uh, what happened to us at uh, Petersburg, uh, we had a chance to uh, charter a boat and go out and see uh, a glacier and some icebergs and some seals that were laying around getting ready uh, to have their young ones. So uh, come along, uh, let's go look at the boat. Uh, this was the boat that we rented, chartered, and it was a metal boat, uh, two big uh, engines, and we went roaring uh, up the coast uh, into some inlet uh, toward a glacier that I don't even know the name of. And uh, I may have taken too many pictures, but we were floating uh, in around huge uh, chunks of ice, uh, some the, the uh, size of houses. And uh, uh, the ice, it was just a, a kind of a awe-inspiring uh, event. Uh, I hated it when those uh, 
uh, smaller chunks of ice uh, banged up against uh, the metal boat uh, because uh, if the boat were ever to capsize or get a hole in it, you would not last very long. You could not survive long in this ice-cold water. As we got closer to the glacier, uh, the boat guy uh, kept saying, uh, there, there, can you see? Look at the brown spots. Those are seals. Do you see the seals now? Well, I might be blind, but for the life of me, I could not see anything uh, that might look like a seal. As uh, we got closer to the glacier, uh, the ice chunks uh, started to uh, thicken up and become more numerous. I still could not see anything that looked like a, a seal. But uh, I could hear the ice breaking off and falling into the water. And uh, that process is called calving. A glacier is calving when it's... Uh, Chunks of ice fall into the water. Uh, just listen in the uh, distance here. You'll be able to make out a sound of the ice falling. Uh, as you can hear, uh, it was not a, a big, uh, gigantic sound, but it was uh, very exciting just being a witness to uh, a long-term, ongoing uh, geological process that we were able to actually witness. Uh, you can see the bare rock left by the receding glacier on the left of the ice there, and uh, just more floating ice. Uh, it was just mesmerizing. I just couldn't get over it. Some of, the, of these chunks were the sizes, I would guess, of small houses. And uh, it seemed to be getting thicker and thicker and more clunking uh, onto this uh, metal boat that we were on. We're supposed to be seeing seals. I still can't see any. Wait, wait, look over to the left of the glacier. There's the brown spots they're talking about. Well, that's about as close as we get. Uh, maybe I'll have a telephoto lens and take a shot here. But uh, yes, sir, those are brown spots. Anybody can see that. There they are, soaking up the sun, wild and natural. Just uh, waiting to uh, have their little ones uh, in the safety of the ice. The seals uh, swim up near the glacier and have their young uh, where it is safe here because of all the ice in the water. Whales, who like to feed on the baby seals, cannot get in here at the seals because uh, they are safe on the ice flows. Uh, the receding of glaciers is not all a bad thing. It uh, provides uh, a safe and ideal spot for uh, young mother seals to give birth to their young. We made it uh, back here onto the boat, safe and sound. Uh, but uh, just before we leave Petersburg, uh, let's take another look at the richer culture uh, here of the uh, Clinket indigenous people. Just uh, look at those designs uh, and the bright uh, red colors on the uh, mixed with the black. Very uh, striking. Uh, here's some more artwork uh, we saw in a building and. Uh, just, again, unique. Look at how they show the insides of the animals. Here's a whale. And uh, this was a small totem uh, in uh, a government uh, building uh, that we uh, went into. All of the indigenous groups are famous for their totems and uh, unique uh, carvings and designs in their uh, artwork. Uh, the whole Pacific coast is indeed the land of the totem pole. In the uh, totems that you see here, uh, you know, there are images uh, carved of, uh, uh, let's say, animals and birds and maybe spirits and uh, so on, like that. Uh, but uh, they had uh, a ceremony uh, uh, celebrating the uh, construction of a new totem that was in front of the library. And it was a kid's totem. And the images carved in that totem pole were uh, ones of... Uh, uh, things that uh, were in children's stories. Uh, here's a, uh, let's take a look at them. This is the pole in uh, front of the library, and uh, these uh, characters uh, are uh, in indigenous children's stories. It made for a very uh, uh, children-oriented uh, uh, 
place uh, in front of the library. It was really quite a, a unique idea, this new kind of totem pole. We are uh, working our way up the panhandle. We're going to leave uh, Petersburg here and head west by ship over to the uh, ancient Russian capital called Sitka. So uh, if you like what you've seen so far, uh, hit the subscribe button and that'll tell you when we're uh, able to bring more videos onto the internet. So until then, so long for now. We'll see you in Sitka.